Hello everybody, it's Claire back with another art journal video. Um, in this one I'm just sharing a little stencil keeper that I'd made to hold the stencils from the Art by Marlene stencil advent calendar. Um, I had these small envelopes left over from another project. Um, they are A1 size, they're quite tiny and I thought they would work perfectly for a little storage uh, book for the stencils. So to start with, I'm just cutting off the top of the envelope, the little um, flap at the top. I have saved these bits of paper. This is terrible, isn't it? I've like, got so many scraps and bits that I've saved that I can't throw away. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but they did have like a self-adhesive bit on the top, which I thought might be quite useful for something. don't quite know what yet, but anyway. Um, then um, I just kind of thought the quickest way to get some colour onto these is to use some of Marlene's collage paper. So... I've got lots of off cuts that are left from other projects, so I'm going to just stick those on. So I've just left a, um, doing a couple of them just to show you is really quite easy. Um, pop a bit of glue on the back, what would be the back of the envelope. Um, then just stick the collage paper on, flip it over and trim off the excess. It really is that easy. Um, I've done it on this side of the um, envelope so that it's easier to get the stencils in and out. And it gives me more on the back to kind of stick back to back when I make the little book structure. Um, and this really is one of the easiest kind of books to make. It's not complicated at all. Um, so yeah, just repeating the process again, just gonna pop a bit of glue onto that back part. I was just checking if that would fit. I'm using a glue stick as well to do this. I'm just popping a bit of paper in there just so that I don't end up gluing the envelope together because that would not be very good. Um, yeah, so pop the glue on, go in with your collage paper or whatever you're deciding to use. I mean, obviously you could paint these as well if you wanted to, but I just felt like that was going to take me too long and I was quite excited about making this little book. Um, this seemed like a great way to do it using Marlene's stuff as well. Okay, so I think you get the idea. Nice and easy. That's how I added some colour to the little pockets for the stencils. Nice and simple, and I do tend to brayer over them once I've stuck them down just to make sure that everything is stuck nice and firmly and there are no air bubbles in the paper so it doesn't lift off. Okay. And they look really pretty with the little bits of collage paper on too. Okay, so once I'd got all of those done, I then kind of put them back to back so that I could see how it was going to look. I didn't really need to do this because I actually end up chopping a bit more off the envelopes before I go any further. But this was just giving me an idea of A, have I got enough envelopes and B, how's it going to feel once it's kind of put together? Um, and just trying to mix up the styles of collage paper that were next to each other as well. Okay, so you can see that's kind of what it's going to be. And then I was like, okay, let's see how the stencils will fit in. And now looking back, I don't actually know why I did this next step. I didn't really need to, but for some reason I decided I wanted to chop a bit more off the envelopes. Um, yeah, I have no clue why I did it. Maybe there was just too much white showing, I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, so I'm chopping now a bit of the white off on each envelope. Um, but like I say, I don't really think this was a necessary step. I don't remember what my thinking was here um, because this doesn't alter the size of the stencil or how much is overhanging of the stencil. But anyway, it's fine. This is what I did. <laughs> Chopped a bit more off. And um, then once I'd done that to all the envelopes, I was then um, ready to start um, sticking these together back to back. So I've got some pieces of card and I would say that I'm cutting these tabs about two and a half inches wide um, and then each one of these is going to get folded in half so that I can um, add them onto the pages. So I've left pretty much um, all of this process in here for you so that you can watch, um, you can pause it and watch it again and again. 
what I will say is just don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. It's so easy to get yourself in a complete muddle. Um, it's a really easy structure to make. One thing I did need to do was to put two tabs in the first two um, the first two pockets and the last two pockets because then those tabs help you to stick your structure into your book cover which we're going to make in a bit so that's the one that's the, that first tab is what sticks that envelope to the next one and then I need another tab at the front here so I'm putting some double-sided tape on that one I'm going to stick this tab on that side and then put some more double-sided tape over there and then that's what sticks these two together okay can you see I've got a tab at the front and I will also have one at the back okay so that's the first two pages and then you just repeat the process so you don't stick two in this one you just go with one because you're going to stick one page onto that tab make sure you leave a little bit of a space between so that your pages will close as well otherwise it will put too much strain on the spine and then just pop another tab on that side like I'm doing here sorry that's off camera we will see in a sec bit more double sided tape stick them back to back and you should have a tab sticking out the other side for your next page and that is how it it grows like that so you just kind of follow this process so then again you're going to stick this next one onto the tab that's poking out leaving a little gap so that your pages can close too close I was too close And then you get your next envelope, your next tab as well. Pop a bit of double sided tape or glue down the spine side. Pop your tab on. And then back to back. So you're just going to follow this process right through to the end and then on your last two envelopes that you stick together you do need to have a tab poking out the back um, so that you've got some way to stick your structure into your book cover. So if you're unsure at this point um, just watch the end of this little bit and then just rewind and follow the process again. Um, once you get going you get into a rhythm with it and it and it kind of makes sense you will you will very quickly get what you're doing and there will be those of you that have made this kind of structure before um, and you will know once you get into the flow you're all right <laughs> so the next thing we're going to do after this is make the book cover So that's all my envelopes put together. You can see they're all fastened together now. And now I'm going to um, make my cover. So this is a piece of cardboard that came off the back of a pad of paper. I do tend to save them. And here I'm just popping the stencil in so I can see how um, wide my book covers need to be. You can see I'm measuring very carefully. <laughs> um, yeah just eyeballing it really obviously if you don't like doing eyeballing you can just measure it um, so just measure the size of your book and add on a little bit extra and here I'm just measuring how big the spine needs to be um, roughly yeah, working that out like that okay so now I'm going to grab a piece of collage paper from another one of Marlene's packs and I'm going to glue these on to the collage paper at the back of this um, pack of 
um, die cut pieces there are some lovely pieces of collage paper and it's a little bit sturdier so this worked perfectly for my um, book cover now again like when you were putting the envelopes back to back and sticking them next to each other you need to leave a little gap at the side between your covers and your spine just so that it will close and open nicely without it straining the paper um, and tearing so a little gap is important um, but you don't need a massive one and also I have seen some people when they make books like this they don't put a piece of card on the spine you don't have to do that you can reinforce it with extra um, paper once you've put your two front and your front and back cover on so you don't have to have the piece of card in the spine but I kind of wanted to keep it nice and sturdy and here I'm just checking that it'll fold and then I'm going to stick the cover down so I tend to just fold the corners over so that I'm not I'm not snipping the corners off and risking having a bit of card poking through where I've misjudged how much to cut so just folding those corners onto the inside of the cover and then I'm going to glue all the edges down as well and then that's the um, the outside of the cover done once I've done that then I'm going to um, stick the little structure in that we've made too So there I was just checking that it will fit and it does and that's all good. So that's how it's going to stick in. You can see I've got the tab at the front and the back that will help it stick in place. Um, and now I've just put some double sided tape and then I'm going to line it up the inside of the book with the cover. Stick those tabs down and then I am going to put some more collage paper over the top of those as well. Just the inside of the cover just to finish it off really nicely. I mean, obviously I've used a lot of Marlene's products for this. You don't have to, you can use your own collage paper. You can paint it if you want to. There are so many possibilities. This was just really about um, kind of showcasing Marlene's beautiful, beautiful things. Um, and and using what I've got as well, because honestly, if you're anything like me, you have so many supplies and stashes of things that I quite often forget about. Um, so this is a great excuse to... Um, to get my stash out and use some of the lovely art by Marlene's things um, so that is pretty much it for this book apart from I did put um, a hole in the front cover and the back cover in the middle added a bit of um, sari ribbon through just so that I could fasten it closed um, and then I decorated the cover too using some of Marlene's die cuts on there um, but I really enjoyed making this it was lots and lots of fun Okay, so there is a little flip through at the end of this uh, video, so I will let you watch that. And here it is, here's the finished product, <laughs> the finished product. Um, I popped a couple of holes in here, I couldn't find my little, um, I never know, eyelets to put in there, but I would have put them in if I could have laid my hands on them, but I was being too impatient. Um, so. As you saw me making it in the video I just thought I'd give you a little look at how it kind of came together once it was finished um, I've got all these pockets ready <clears throat> for the next day's stencils to go in all the way up to Christmas lots of fun um, and I was thinking as well that I could if I wanted to use each stencil on each day and just do a little bit of the stenciling on the pocket too um, or I could even create a little bit of art to go on there if I wanted to so it's got lots of possibilities of, of uh, more things that I could do so there we go that's it sorry about the bit of background noise on that last little clip um, it was very cold in my art room and there we go that's the finished thing um, the little stencil keeper made um, you can use this process to make your own little books as well so it's a great technique for making 
a mini book that you can use again and again. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon.